Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Paper Crafting Thursday. I'm Leslie Watkins. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some ideas for tone on tone stamping. So the color I'm working with today is Pebbled Path, which is a color I really like. And, uh, and I'm also going to be using some tools I've got a blender pen. All of, all of the things that I'm using today I will have listed below so you can just click on the link to see what they are. And the blender pen is a double-ended brush pen that has a smaller and a larger brush and it con contains a, a fluid that will moisten the water-based inks and make them um, Act like a act like a marker, except that you can change it to any color that you like at will. So it's a very handy tool to have, and it's also extremely economical. They last a long time, and uh, and I will be demonstrating that in just a minute. I also have a little bit of the craft white ink. And I have that on my block. I'm going to just add another drop. So that comes in a little bottle like this. It's very thick. And I have my pebbled path ink. So I'm going to be doing tone on tone. This is my Pebble Path cardstock. I'm using the Textured Floral Stamp Set, which is uh, a very pretty set that has lots of details and some nice sentiments. And I've got my uh, stamp pad here, and this is just a piece of foam that's covered with a, uh, just some scrap paper. So let's get started. I'm going to do a little bit of stamping and stamping off. So what I mean by stamping off is that I simply stamp off on my scrap paper before I stamp onto my cardstock. I'm going to do that again. And then I'm going to go ahead full strength and you should be able to see the difference. Okay, so that way I can very quickly get some tonal values, which is what I'm looking for. I'm going to do the same thing with my leaves. I'm going to start with my little cluster of leaves first. And stamp off and I'm just going to stamp below. I'm sorry if you can hear the lawn mowers in the background. Hopefully they'll stop soon. It seems like I'm on the same schedule as, as they are. Now I'm taking the larger cluster of leaves and these I'm going to stamp full strength. And I think I want to add a few more of these smaller ones, just kind of coming down like so. So there are my peonies. Now I'd like to add some stems. So what I'm going to do here is I have in the lid of my stamp pad a couple of drops of the ink and for that I just used the refillers add a drop and that's going to go a very long ways.
I'm just checking my settings, make sure that you can see and hear me. And that looks good. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is take my blender pen and pick up a little bit of that ink and I can add some stems just, just as if I was using a marker except that the ink coordinates perfectly with the ink and the papers that I'm using. So there's the beginning of my design. Now I can go back in and load up with the ink and I can begin to add some details with a with a slightly darker color because this is the full strength So if I want to add a little bit of detail to the leaves, I can easily do that. If I wanted to find some of these petals a little bit better, add some shading. just a couple of strokes I can give my stamped image just a, a little bit extra something and just give it a little more of my um, my personality. Now when you're when you're happy with the way your darks look, I'm just gonna add a couple more strokes in these shadowy areas. So now it's looking a little more dimensional. Next I'm going to go to my white. Now to clean my pen, all I have to do is just rub it on some scrap paper to get rid of the excess ink. And you can see that it's self-cleaning. Okay, so now it's ready for the next color. I'm going to do the same thing with the white. Just pick up some of that ink. And I can just add a few touches here and there just to pick up the highlights. I can blend the white with some of the ink that's already 
stamped on there. And I'm just adding a little bit of cross hatching. Little lines. And the white is going to, as it soaks into the cardstock, it's going to um, lose a little bit of its sparkle, but you can go back and in the areas that you mix the white with the ink, it's going to be a softer effect still. So you can, you can use it to blend. So here it is coming along. You can, of course, do as much or as little as you like for whatever effect it is that you're after. I'm going to go back over some of these areas, make them a little bit brighter. go okay so that's how you can add a little extra dimension to your tone on tone stamping now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sponge the edges so let me show you how I do that um, oops sorry let's get the buttons organized here Going back to my stamp pad. Hey, Kathy. Thanks for watching. Where are you tuning in from? Now I'm just taking the sponge. I'm, I'm just gently patting that onto the ink pad. And I'm going to go around all the edges. With just a little bit showing on the on the top plane but most of the majority of the ink is on the side plane so it just gives a beautiful little accent around the edge and helps to set it off If you'd like to do a little bit more, and I like to do this in the corners, you can come in and with just a little kind of a circular rubbing motion, just add a little more shadow to the, to the corners. Just sort of blend that away. Okay, so there's, there's my panel. Now while I have everything out, I'm going to um, do a little more tone on tone on this piece, but this time what I'd like to do is just to create a kind of an overall pattern. So in the stamp set, we have these two smaller Flowers. I'm going to go ahead and mount those up. I'm going to start with the, the slightly larger one. And again, I'm going to be stamping off. So, so back into my ink pad, stamp off, and then stamp on my card. 
and I'm going to turn the stamp so that the flowers are going into various directions. There we go. Now I'm going to add a couple more full strength. Just like so. Now I'm going to grab that smaller flower. that on my block and do exactly the same thing stamping off and then just add a little faint kind of an accent flower couple of dark ones. Alright, so there's a kind of an overall pattern. I can go back to my ink and I can use that to add a few details. So just a, just a little bit here and there. What I'm hoping to accomplish is to just have some variation in, in tones so it's just not a flat flat value. So for these sort of daisy-like flowers, I can go into their centers, add a little bit of detail. But keeping it basically pretty abstract. So in just a few minutes, I've created my own tone-on-tone -tone DSP. DSP stands for Designer Series Paper. So I've made my own that's going to coordinate perfectly with the project that I have in mind. And then finally, can go back with my white and add a few touches here and there. Just picking up the highlights on some of these petals. And because these stamps are what we call distinctive stamps, that means they already have some tonality built into them. This is going to give me a lot of different tones of, of color that are going to add a lot more detail, a lot more depth, a lot more interest to my overall pattern and design. I 
Okay, I think we're just about done with this stage. I do want to add a couple of spots of dark accents in the center of some of these flowers. So I'm going to go back, pick up my dark ink, and just kind of stipple a little bit of accent into the centers where it looks a little bit light. Okay, like over here. Just give it a little, little extra texture. Now, if you wanted to, you could add stems and leaves or bugs, butterflies, dragonflies, anything you like. The sky's the limit. Okay, I'm happy with that. The blender pens actually come two to a pack, so it's a really good deal. They're very inexpensive, and they allow you to do quite a lot with your stamped images. Now, I, oh, I do want to sponge the edges of this as well. Hi, Kelly. Was it? Oh, she she was she had an appointment. Okay, and Vicky, hi Vicky. All right. Well, nice to see you all here. And Linda. Linda says she has to play with this technique more. This is this is a fantastic technique, and you can also bring stencils into it. You know those decorative masks that. Um, work beautifully with the blending brushes but I love I love tone on tone and I really am so happy with this particular color this is called pebbled path and as soon as I saw it when the new catalog came out I fell in love with it because for me, it's just that perfect kind of a tonal, warm gray. All right, and I want to go into those corners a little bit more. All righty, so let's get the other one out. I'm going to do a little cleanup here. So here are, oh, that's not the one. Where's my other one? Here it is. Here we go. So here are my two examples. Now I left a little room up here for a sentiment. And I'll zoom you in so you can get a better look at that. So there they are. So that only took just a couple of minutes. Okay, you don't need a lot of fancy equipment and you have a, a very nice result. Now let me show you how you can use something like this. I've created a holder for my watercolor paper and again I'm doing the tone on tone and this time I want to mount my, I'll just get the bow out of the way, I want to mount my decorative panels to the covers of my folder. 
So to do that, I'm just going to add a little bit of glue. Just go around the edges. A little bit on the inside. Get that centered on there. I'm going to hold that for just a moment. And grab a tissue for that little bit of glue that's coming out over here. Flip it over. This is going to be for my back cover. Just give that glue a couple of seconds to set up. I'm going to use my bone folder to make sure that I've got really nice adhesion. Okay, so there is a, a nice example of tone-on-tone -tone stamping with a little bit of um, white accents and I've also got the tone on tone cardstock using just a little bit of ink around the edges to help set that off okay so there's my little folder and this folder is designed to hold two packs of the fluid 100 watercolor paper and the instructions on how to how to make this folder are going to be included in the summer garden wor watercolor workshop so if you're signed up for that then you will be getting the pdf with all the instructions on how to make this little folder and it's a great way to carry your watercolor paper with you so it, it keeps it nice and clean and you can also store your watercolor paintings in there as well. If you'd like to learn more about the Summer Garden Watercolor Workshop, please subscribe to Notes from Dandelion Cottage. And you can find that link in the description below after the video, as well as all of the um, supplies that I used to make this. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay well, stay happy, and stay creative, and I will see you next time.